Hello and welcome to this supplementary update on the 4th of Tuesday the 4th of August and in this update I'm going to have a quick look at a couple of shares that I'm paying particular attention to over the course of the next week or so. One of them is Royal Bank of Scotland. Um, in the wake of this morning's announcement that uh, the UK government will be paring down its majority stake in the lender from 78% to 72% but also going to be looking at Apple shares because they've broken through a very, very key level, the 200-day moving average. And given the fact they make up 14% of the NASDAQ, that could be a significant change of direction from the uptrend that we've been pretty much in since the end of 2013. So let's start with RBS. This morning's share sale has come in for quite a lot of political criticism, but whenever the announcement would have been made, I think the the criticism would have been equally as toxic. I think the key question here is, is RBS better off in private hands or in political hands? And for me, it's a no-brainer. There is never any prospect that the UK taxpayer was going to get all of its money back. The fact of the matter is the bank is much, much smaller and really it's just a question of when we got the first sell-off. We've got the first sell-off of the governmental stake today simply because this is probably the first opportunity that Mr Osborne has had, unencumbered by Lib Dem coalition partners, to be able to actually do what he wants to do with respect to um, UK, UK government asset sales. So the key level I'm looking at is the support which currently comes in around about the lows this year, around about 326 pence but also the lows that we saw in the middle of last year around about 308 pence. For pretty much the last two or three years, RBS shares have traded sideways. The beginning of 2013, it's pretty much at the levels that it currently is trading at now. So in terms of the downside, could we get further downside? It's quite possible. Certainly we are approaching some very key support levels. We've also got some key resistance levels currently around about 370p. So when we look at the share price in that context, the, the downside risk is likely to be contained to between 310 and 320p. Upside risk, you're looking at 350, 360p. This next chart is much more interesting because since the end of 2013, Apple shares have been in a steady uptrend. Since the middle of April, we've been pretty much trading sideways with respect to Apple shares and the concern is I think that this upward momentum that we've been seeing in place over the course of the last um, 18 months or so is now starting to run out of steam and the first indication of that is the break below the 200 day moving average that we saw earlier this week. The next key support level for Apple shares is around about $114. Now this could potentially be important. Is Apple good value over the over the very, very long term? Absolutely it is. It doesn't necessarily mean that we can't start to trade sideways for at least another two, three, four, five months, given the gains that we've made over the course of the last two or three years. Momentum is starting to tail off. The 50-day moving average is starting to roll over towards the 200-day moving average. That suggests to me that we could well have seen a short-term top, and if we drop below the key support at around about $114, we could, we could fall all the way back to the long-term trend line that comes in all the way down at around about $100 a share. So that's it for this week's supplementary market update. Until next week, this is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.